So today I'm gonna to be talking about my new Tudor Blackberry Chrono, but I'm getting tired of talking about watches here. I think I know the perfect place to do it though. Welcome to F1. So I'm going to be going back and forth between having shots of me here talking, explaining everything and actually there at Coda just because the audio wasn't great given the, the cars and the wind and people talking, screaming, clapping. So I was fortunate enough to go to the F1 race that happened at Circuit of America here in Austin, Texas. I live very close by so I was able to go with my wife and a few friends that are also F1 fanatics. And I really wanted to take a chronograph with me but I didn't have one in my collection. Thankfully, you know, because of perfect timing, the Tudor AD gave me a call and told me, hey, we have this new Black Bay Chrono that just came in. And I, as soon as I walked into the AD and got it sized up, it was just the perfect watch for me. I really love this one over the Panda configuration because I really love the contrast between the black dial and the hour markers. So now let's get into the specs for the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph. The Tudor Black Bay Chrono comes in at 41 millimeters wide with a 14.4 millimeter thickness a 50.1 millimeter lug to lug length, a lug width of 22 millimeters. It does have a sapphire crystal with AR coating underneath it. It does have the screw down pushers along with a crown that gives it a 200 meter water resistance. Like I said, this configuration is a black dial with the white sub dials, which in my opinion is much nicer than the original Panda dial. So as many know, the movement that is inside the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph is not technically made in-house by Tudor. It's actually borrowed from Breitling's B01 movement and then slightly modified and then encased inside the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph. Some saw this as a negative point from Tudor, but I actually like the fact that they were collaborating with Breitling and they kind of gave them their time only movement in kind of exchange for this. Because Tudor realized that, you know what, we can either spend millions of dollars doing the research, the research and development to create our own chronograph to put into this watch that would just increase the price and, you know, Tudor's all about being a bit more of a affordable watch to obtain and then just collaborated with Breitling and then just told him hey you know what if you guys need something we can you know offer our time only movement we take your chronograph so we modified it and put it into ours so it, in my opinion was a great idea on two different part so the movement in this is a column wheel chronograph caliber NT5813 it is an automatic movement that has 41 jewels it does have a 28,800 vibrations per hour it is cost certified it has a rate of minus two plus four seconds per day and it does have a 70 hour power reserve which is pretty great if you wear it throughout the week put it down on friday and you pick it up on monday and it's going to be ready to go so it's awesome so the overall styling for this chronograph is very traditional it does have the screw down pushers along with the sub dials in the black bay fashion this does feature the not so loved faux rivets along the bracelet with majority of the watch being brushed steel along the bracelet and a majority of the case, it does really make it feel a bit more of a rugged watch. The overall case is a lot thicker, the bracelet doesn't taper down as much, the clasp is a lot smaller, shorter, sturdier in my opinion. When the opportunity came up for me to take a chronograph to this race, I was kind of stuck between this along with a Speedy, given the fact they're around the same price and for me, the new Speedy is really nice. I really love the update on the bracelet. I felt that it was much needed, but there was just something about the overall dial and the presence of the watch on the wrist that just really didn't wow me. I really love the fact that the Sapphire sandwich does have the exposed movement on the back. I really love on the Speedy the fact that it has those spiral lugs, but overall the watch didn't really have a lot of dynamic, if that makes sense for me, versus this watch has a bit more of a vintage feel to it. I do love the small touches of red throughout this watch in the text along with the chronograph hand. It just does add that little bit of contrast throughout the watch, which makes it really nice. One of the things that this watch does very well is tell the time, as silly as that sounds. It does have a date function located at 6 o'clock that does provide that extra functionality and practicality. Some people don't like the fact that the Black Bay does have this snowflake hand because it obstructs the view of the subdials, but I really do like it. So now let's get down to if I would actually recommend buying this watch. Though the Tudor Black Bay Chrono is an excellent watch that for me is 
kind of a no-brainer if you're looking for a chronograph around the $6,000 mark. Something to really keep in mind is the thickness of this watch. It is not a sleek watch by any means. The fact that the bracelet doesn't taper down as much, the fact that the case is a lot beefier and a lot, has a much more of a presence on the wrist, it's really something you're not gonna wanna wear with, let's say, a suit or with a long sleeve shirt, because it's definitely not gonna be sliding under any cuff. I know that Tudor's been coming up with a lot of updates to some of their models, given the new bracelet on the Pelagos and on the Ranger and the Black Bay Pro. I would really love to see that new updated bracelet on this chronograph to kind of take away the faux rivets, to have a bit more of a taper, a easily adjusting clasp would be a really nice addition to this watch. And in my opinion, all it would need, along with trimming down the thickness of the case, it is just a very thick, beefy case. Definitely go out there and try on this watch before you're thinking about buying it and to see if the thickness of it or overall heft of it is kind of gonna be a deal breaker for you. So we had an amazing time at this event. I got to meet a lot of really cool, interesting people that had some really great watches on. I got to ask them what they had and who they were going for, so here are a few clips of that. Hi, my name is Antti, I'm rooting for McLaren. Uh, this is my Tudor Black Bay GMT. I got it actually as my college graduation present for my parents. McLaren, of course. Cool, man. what's your name, man? Josh. Vinden. Hey, Checo. Oh, it's Red Bull. Max all the way. That's buddy. right. <laughs> nice. Checo Perez. Yeah. Go go for Verstappen, man. That's right. Verstappen. I already want it. Let's go. Look at Red Bull. In case I haven't mentioned already, there is an Instagram account for Monarch Timepiece Collection that does have kind of different content than what I'm putting on here. It's a bit more creative and a different spin. It's not definitely not your average wrist roll. I'll give you that much. So head on over to Instagram and follow the account. It's Monarch Timepiece Collection. And if you like this video, guys, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm looking forward to making more content for you all and you know, thinking of ways to kind of integrate cool situations and life events along with some really great watches and presenting them to you all. So until then, take care. Later.